we're going to solve a 3 by 3 system of equations. You can see that circled in or over here on the left. And we're going to use Kramer's rule for this. Now, I think this is a, an appropriate use of Kramer's rule because solving a 3 by 3 is not an easy thing to do. And Kramer's rule offers us a pretty good way forwards. Now, the first things we're asked to do is convert the system into matrix form. That is, A, the coefficient matrix, times X, the variable matrix, equals B, the solution matrix. And what I've done up top here, which you can see right here, is I've established what A and B are. Okay, I'm just reading off the coefficients in that system of equations to get these. Pause the video, take a look, you'll see that everything lines up. Negative, oh, that's an eraser, that's bad. Negative 1, negative 1 and 3, well, that's negative X, negative X, and 3X. Okay, so make your matrices. And then what we have to do is construct three new matrices called AX, AY, AZ. I'm looking at these guys right here. So the way, that it, the way this happens is, let's see if I can find an ink that will work here. Let's take the solution matrix, negative 4, 0, 1, and I'm going to take that and plop it over here in place of the leftmost column on the coefficient matrix, A, and take a look at where the, what that results in. You get this, which is, you know, the solutions, negative 4, 0, 1, and all the rest of the numbers that were in the coefficient matrix A, okay? And that's how I build AX. Now I'm going to do the same thing for AY and AZ. I'll use AY as an example, okay? I'm taking those coefficients from the solution matrix, plugging them into the middle column, okay, the second column, and that gives me the second variable matrix, AY. And likewise for that last one, you're going to plug those into the third column of the coefficient matrix. Okay, that would be taking these numbers, plugging them into the very ends on the right, replacing those, and then you get this matrix down here. Okay, so hopefully you understand how these matrices are being constructed. The reason why I'm constructing them is because Kramer's rule depends on finding the determinants of each of these matrices. Now, the determinant of a 3 by 3 is is not an easy thing, but I'm going to work through it uh, down below here. Okay, You'll see I took AZ and I just rewrote it over here with bigger numbers, so this should be a little more clear to follow. And what I want to do is guide you through this process of finding a determinant. If you know how to find a determinant, if you're good at that, skip this part, right? Uh, jump forward two minutes or so. I should be done by then. So I'm going to multiply negative 1 times the determinant of this sub-matrix in the lower right corner. So it's going to be negative 1 times Remember how to find the determinant of a 2 by 2? We make this little fishy pattern, like that. So it's going to be 3 times 1 minus 6 times 0. Okay, That's how I do that first blue part. Now we're going to move over into, I feel like, magenta right now. We're going to take this number right here, the top middle, and I'm going to multiply it by the matrix formed from these two columns. So this is going to be, no, it's, it's going to be minus for reasons that I went over in class, but you just have to get used to memorizing this one. It's going to be minus negative 2 times the determinant of that pink set of squares right there. So that would be negative 1 times 1 minus 3 times 0. Okay. I am sorry about the matrix rules with determinants. I don't make the matrix rules, I just follow them. So let's do the last one here. I'm going to take negative 4, and I'm going to multiply that by the determinant of this submatrix. So this one's a positive, plus negative 4 times negative 1 times 6 minus 3 times 3. So this is a great place to pause the video and walk through those steps carefully so you understand how the determinants of a 3 by 3 is happening. Now, let's go ahead and simplify all this stuff. Let's see what we get. This is going to be negative 1 times, what's in that first set? Well, it's 3 minus 6, that's going to be negative 3. And in the second set, I have minus negative 2. Okay, I'll just keep that minus negative 2 for now. We'll do with that in a moment. Uh, it's going to be negative 1 minus 3, so that's negative 4. And the third set is going to be plus negative 4 times, what do we have here? This is negative 6 minus 9, so that's 
negative 15 from the looks of it. I simplify more, I get three. Ugh. That's gonna turn out to be minus eight in the middle there. And then plus 60 from the looks of it. So 52, I think that is 55. Okay, I appear to be wrong. Dang it, let's see if I can figure this out quick. Agony. Oh, oh, no, this is right, okay. <laughs> I was looking at the answer key. This this is right. Okay, so now I have the um, determinants for A, Z. So I just put that right here. Okay. Now, the determinants for the others are going to be done in a similar method to what I just did right here, um, except for the shouting and confusion. Uh, but let me just write the answers in there so we can get going with this discussion. The determinant of A, this guy up here, if you work through all the math, it's going to be negative 60. Determinant of AX is going to be negative 155, and the determinant of AY is going to be 40. Okay, so if you want to go through these and check your math, see if you're doing it the right way, this, this is a great way to do it. You've got an answer key right here now. See if you're finding the determinant of each of these correctly. Now, getting back to Kramer's rule. Okay, I'm going to just cut myself a little bit of space here. We don't need this anymore. Here's what Kramer's rule says, and here's why it's so useful x equals the determinant of matrix AX divided by the determinant of matrix A, which, according to this set of numbers I have here, is negative 155 divided by negative 60, which, a little bit of work, you'll get it to simplify to 31 over 12. Okay, so that's, that's this guy, 31 twelfths. Let's do Y. Y equals the determinant of matrix AY, divided by the determinant of A. And according to our numbers up top, that's gonna to be 40 divided by negative 60. Okay, so in other words, negative 2 thirds. And the last one, you can see the pattern. Z is going to be equal to the determinant of AZ divided by the determinant of A, which is equal to, let's see, AZ is the 55 I got so excited about, and A is still negative 60. So we can simplify that a little bit and get it to negative 11 twelfths. Okay, so that's how we do a three by three system. If you are ever so unfortunate as to have a four by four system, you would solve it with the same pattern. You'd have one more variable at the bottom, like w equals the determinant of a w divided by the determinant of A. What would make the 4x4 most challenging is finding those determinants. I think that's the long part of these problems.